How's everybody doing today? It's January 23rd, Saturday. So happy Saturday to you, January 23rd of 2021. It rained this morning here in San Diego. It looks like it'll probably rain throughout the day, which is cool. I like that. I used to hate rain, but now I love rain. We need it. And it kind of, uh, it was good for my car because I park at my home. There's these sprinklers that shoot water all over my car. Every morning when I get up, I got water spots all over my car. I'm like, oh, I constantly got to go to the car wash. So thank you, Lord, for your rains. I washed my car, <laughs> right? Jesus, um, Matt, if you look at Luke chapter 17, it really ties in with Matthew chapter 24. Like Matthew 24, verse 17 and 18 ties in with Luke chapter 17, verse 31, that says, On that day, let the one who is on the housetop with his goods in the house not come down, not come down. Coming down is what? Descending. It's coming to a lower place. Don't come down to take them away. See, when you go down, you go into the past, the stuff below to take it away. Don't go down, you guys. This year, I'm talking about ascension ascension that's being at a higher place right so don't come down to take them away and likewise let the one who is in the field not turn back Ooh, and then this next sentence luke 17 32 verse 32 now he says remember lot's wife remember lot's wife you remember the account of lot's wife she looked back and what happened she got frozen in time she looked back and she stayed looking back, frozen in time. Reminds me of what Paul says to the people in Philippi, who he calls the Philippians. These are Philippians. If you live in Philippi, you're a Philippian. I live in California, so I'm a Californian. So he writes to the Philippians. What's the word Philip, Philippian mean? I don't have the uh, meaning of it. I wrote it somewhere. Man. I need to relook that up again. I usually keep it next to uh, the 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 when it says Philippians in the first page. It, it, I usually have the meaning of names there, but I must have wrote it in a different Bible. Oh well, but I, I can't remember. But anyhow, um, he writes to the Philippians in Philippi, and he says in verse thirteen, he says, "Here's the one thing he does: forgetting what lies behind." Right. When he says forgetting, it's a Greek word, epi, epi, lamtha, nomahi, which means to lose out of mind, letting it go, right? So that thing he's holding on to in his mind, maybe it's something that's hanging on by like what they call a thread, right? Got to snip that thread, like an umbilical cord, right? You want to let that child out of you? Well, you got to snip that umbilical cord. He wants to forget what lies behind. And what's he do? He says, and straining forward to what lies ahead. This Greek word straining forward is super long. So if you speak Greek or understand Greek, um, uh, let me know how I do when I try to pronounce this really long word. Epic tine no menos. <laughs> Epic tainomenos. It means stretching intensely forward, straining after, or extending. It's very intense, stretching forward, extending. So he's trying to go forward, leaving what's behind, forgetting that stuff. He's stretching forward to what lies ahead. And what lies ahead, he says, the goal of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. The upward call. Now, now we, Jesus was talking about in the book of Luke, not reaching for the things below. Paul's saying he's reaching for the upward call. Upward is ano in Greek. Ano, A-N-O. It means above or in a higher place. And that's exactly what the word ascension means. Ascension in a higher place. Now, here's one thing you should know. 
when you are seated in Christ, in Christ, like Paul said, the upper call, in Christ, you're seated in Christ. So you, when you're seated in Christ, you're already in the highest place you can be. Your spirit is already there. The thing is, the things of our mind bring us back down sometimes, mentally, right? They drag you down, they weigh you down, they press on you. And sometimes we have what you may call an emotional affair with the things below you or the things behind you of the past. Like Lot's wife, I don't want to put her down because maybe there were some things behind that she really cared for. You know, the Lord says, come on, escape. The angels are pulling on them, but let's go, move forward. Move ahead, don't look back. But she didn't trust the word of God. She didn't trust his word. She trusted whatever she was tied to from behind. Maybe maybe it was dangling by a thread. Maybe it was like that little umbilical cord. She just needed to snip it. Don't look back. But when she looked back, she froze in time. Like a pillar of salt, they say. Always to stand there and look at the things behind. I know there's some things behind you guys it's really tough to let go of. Really tough to let go of. But sometimes those things that are behind, they're just keeping you down. Are they really helping you to move forward? Or are they weighing you down? It could be anything. There's sometimes you have people in your life that they want to keep you back because they're keep, they keep looking at the past and they hold maybe the past against you. They keep pointing to the past and pointing to the past and you're trying to move forward, but they don't want you to. No, I'm still back here. You stay back here with me, right? Lot, unfortunately, he couldn't go back to grab his wife. He took his daughters and they ran forward. And they actually ran forward into the mountains, a high place. They ascended, right? Sometimes you and I, because we don't know what's that destination. What's that destination? Is it a higher place? We don't have the foresight to see where we're being led by the spirit, right? So we hold on to the things in the past. We keep looking back to the things in the past. And Paul says, no, forget those things, you guys. Forget them. Listen, if I kept on holding on to the things of the past, there's no way I would move forward. No way I would move forward. I've gone through a lot of different things. Five attempts at suicide. If I just dwelt on that and dwelt at that, how can I move forward, you guys? Right? I know it was a huge event in my life. You, you attempted suicide five times. Yes. And if I just rehearse it and go over it in my mind, what am I doing for myself? Is it helping me to be transformed by the renewing of my mind? Or am I staying in the past, wondering how I could come to a place so low, so low? No, I'm stretching forward, I'm moving ahead, right? And you know, here's the thing about ascension. Man, think of it this way. <laughs> ascension, here's an image I just now got, good. So, have you ever been on a trampoline? A trampoline. You jump on the trampoline, boing, 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 you know, and if you like trampolines, you want to do what? You want to go higher and higher and higher. But the only way that you can ascend is by descending. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying the only way you can move forward is to move it back into the past, but you've already have that past. 
So you already have the past, which was a descension, but now you want to descend, you want to ascend higher. Do you understand that? And sometimes what happens is when you are expecting to go higher, you feel like yourself is going lower. What's going on? What's going on, Lord? I, I, I believe in this promise of ascension. I want to go to a higher place in my mind. I know I'm seated in Christ and spirit, but my mind needs to catch up. But how come I'm just being pulled down, pulled down, so it seems? Maybe you are pre being prepared to launch higher than you had expected. I remember I attended this church years ago, and the pastor of the church actually caught me off guard. He called me up there and said, listen, I want Mike to give a prophetic word for somebody in the audience. And I'm like, whoa, he, he didn't tell me he was going to do this, nothing. So he had me stand up there, and he had me turn. I faced the stage, and all the people were, were facing behind me. And he has his microphone. He says, okay, I'm going to go to somebody. You can't see who they are, Mike, but I'm going to go to somebody and I'm going to stand by this person. I want you to prophesy about them. <laughs> Whoa. Talking about put me on the spot. So I, uh, okay. So I have no clue who's back there. But suddenly I feel all of this pain. So I'm speaking what I'm experiencing. I don't physically feel pain, but it's almost like I can sense pain. So I said, you know, usually people want to just say, you know, kind of, oh, I, I see somebody that's very creative. And blah, blah. No, I said, there's a lot of pain. This person's experiencing a lot of pain. And they keep trying to go forward and trying to go forward, but it's like they're being constantly pulled back, pulled back, pulled back. And not only are they being pulled back, but they're being pulled down, pulled down. But I said, I see an archer's bow and I see the archer holding an arrow. And I said, and as he pulls that arrow back, he's pulling it back, he's pulling it back. And then he pulls it down, down, down and arches the bow upward, upward, but he's pulling the arrow down and the arrow's going further, further down. I said, you feel like you're that arrow. You're being pulled down, pulled down, pulled down. But when that archer lets go of that arrow now, it can soar further and higher than it ever did because it was brought back to its furthest behind and going down, down, down as far low as it can get and then it's launched forward. And I said, you're going through a time of depression and suicidal tendencies. In front of everybody I said this. I said, but God's got a plan for you and you're going to be launched further ahead and further up, up, up than you ever expected. Next thing you know, this guy's engaged to get married. He meets a woman, he's engaged, he's got a great job. Everything's going exactly how the prophetic word came out. And this guy, he cried and thanked me for that word, thanked me because he said, everything you said was true. I've been contemplating suicide. I've been feel like I'm at my lowest, lowest low. And I can't snap out of it. And that word actually helped him to snip that thread, that umbilical cord, so he can move forward. The point is, you guys, there's things that we gotta let go of that are weighing us down in order so that we can experience this ascension. If the, the quicker you do it, you will experience that sudden, that immediate ascension. You're already there in Christ. Now it's catching your mind up. And as your mind catches up, guess what else follows? Your body follows, right? You get to experience what you already are, who you already are in Christ. Now, I don't want to say only the year 2021. That's our ascension. I'm not trying to prophesy really either. But I'm trying to give you a word that you can grab hold of for this year, right? And take it into the next year and the next year and the next year. Letting go of those things behind, right? Not looking back. Maybe you feel like Job. You're sitting in ashes. You've got boils all over your body and you're taking stones or pieces of pottery or clay and you're scratching and scratching yourself just to make yourself feel at ease. And you lost everything and everyone in your life. Job suffered, my friends. Yes, he did. 
but he hung in there. He did not curse God and die. He hung in there. He had to let go of those things in the past. He lost his own family, his own children, his livestock. Everything was stripped from this man. But guess what? When it looked like he was at his very lowest, 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 and things couldn't get any worse, uh, much worse, and maybe this guy's about to die, guess what? Ascension came. He got so much more than he ever, ever had. And he learned a great lesson. And what he went through, instead of tearing him up, he saw that there was beauty amongst those ashes that he was sitting in. And God takes those ashes and he makes them into something beautiful for you. You got to not lose faith or trust. Grab hold of it, my friends. Keep hold of it. Do not let it be taken away from you. Don't give it up. Keep moving forward, whatever that is. If it's an old belief system, let it go. Don't look back. If it's theology and doctrine that you're holding on so dear, let it go. Don't look back. Maybe the Lord is trying to help you to understand things differently so you can get to know His heart better instead of just theology, knowing His heart and His heart for you. You understand? What an awesome, great place to be. All right, I got to cut this short because I got to get going, you guys. I got a destination to be somewhere, so I love you. I hope you guys all have a great day, and I will see you in the next video. God bless.